I have an encouraging word for the body of Christ for 2023. As I've been seeking the Lord, the Holy Spirit has been showing me what he wants to accomplish and how Jesus wants to use you in this season. As we enter into 2023, I want to remind you of the truth that God is always working to bring about his plan and purpose. He desires to bring healing and hope to those who are hurting and in need. This is a season of new beginnings where God is doing a new thing. He's calling on each of us to be a part of his plan to bring salvation and redemption to the world. He's calling on us to share the good news of Jesus with those around us and be the light that he's asked us to be. As we enter into the new year, Jesus shared that it is a season of the Lord's favor. Praise God. In Luke 4.19, Jesus declared that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free. This verse reminds us that God's favor is not just for a select few, but for all of us. And he desires to bring freedom and healing to all those who call upon his name. In this season of new beginnings, God is doing a new thing. Isaiah 43, 19 tells us, See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. God is always doing uh, something new in our lives and in the world around us. He's always working to bring about his plan and his purpose as we trust in him and his leading. Uh, well, we can be confident that he will make a way for us even in the midst of difficult circumstances. God is calling on us to be laborers in his field. Matthew 9, 38 tells us, Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers to his harvest field. God is calling on each of us to be a part of his plan to bring about salvation and redemption to the world. He's calling on us to share the good news of Jesus with those around us and be a light in this dark world. One of the ways that God is calling us to share is through his love, uh, by sharing our testimony. In Revelations 12:11, uh, we're told, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much that they would shrink from their death. Our testimony of what God has done in our lives is powerful and has the ability to change lives. As we share our story, we are sharing the love and grace of Jesus with those that are around us. In this season, we will also see an increase in the leading of the Holy Spirit. Jesus promises in John 14, 26, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I've said to you. As we follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, we'll be guided into all truth. We will have the wisdom that we need to make the right decisions and be the light in the world. I want to share with you as well that uh, this year of 23, there's going to be some major decisions that God is going to be bringing to you. And without seeking the Lord, uh, you can have a, a, a catastrophic uh, things happen if you aren't asking for his direction in these decisions. So he's going to be tugging on you to seek him and he will give you the instructions on what decisions that you're going to be making and helping you with this process. This year, the Lord is also bringing a season of acceleration for healing and learning. I'm seeing that God is wanting to heal broken-hearted issues such as demonic oppression, past trauma, negative emotions, and evil physical issues. And Jesus is doing it accelerated, meaning he's wanting to heal you quickly. I'm also seeing that Jesus is teaching us quickly as well. And it's going to be an acceleration of learning how to get our freedom by coming to Jesus as friend, father, and judge through prayer. This teaching will help us throughout the year and the rest of our life. Now, Jesus is equipping us to wage warfare when the enemy attacks us, and, and we're going to be doing it through the strength of Jesus Christ. 
Isaiah 54, 2 through 3 tells us, Enlarging the places of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. For I will spread you out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispose of nations and settle their, uh, in their desolate cities. As we trust God and follow his leading, we will see an acceleration of growth and understanding of his plan and his will for our lives. Uh, this acceleration in learning is to understand so that w w we can uh, use it to exercise our faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 tells us and reminds us, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. As we step out in faith and trust in God, he will provide the evidence and the substance of his plan for our lives. In addition to exercising our faith, this is a year also and a time for us to start doing what the Lord has called us to do in our ministries, whatever it is. He's called you. He's more likely tugged it on your heart. And if you don't know, ask him. I'm also seeing a big movement where, uh, the, the, where, where God is raising up a prophetic army of people to establish his kingdom. Um, and he's just moving on people to be more prophetic because he's wanting to use them in these last days. Isaiah 61, uh, uh, 6 states that you will be called priests of the Lord and you will be named ministers of God. As we follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and obey God's call on our lives, we will be used by him in powerful ways to impact the world. As we continue to move forward in this new year, it's important to remember the power of prayer and intercession. In James 5.16, it states, The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Jesus is calling us to, to be prayer warriors and to intercede on the behalf of others. He's calling us to pray in the Spirit and speak up tongues of fire. Now, this is a powerful way to tap into the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, to bring about change to the world around us. I see God is raising up an army of warriors who will be intercessors. Now, God's raising up this army who will stand in the gap for their communities and pray for the state, national, and world leaders. In the Bible, we see an importance of intercession and prayer for those who are in authority. In 1 Timothy 2, 1, Paul encourages us to pray for kings and all those in authority that we may live peaceful and quiet lives. He reminds us that it is good and pleasant uh, and it also pleases God. It allows us to live in a society where the gospel can be preached and shared without hindrance. Similar in the book of Daniel, we see Daniel praying for the city of Jerusalem, for the people of God, for the king of Babylon. God is calling his people to take their place as intercessors and go before the courts of heaven and pray for those who are in authority. As we see in scriptural reference in the courts of heaven in the book of Revelations 4, 1 through 5, where the apostle John saw a door standing open in heaven, and he heard a voice that sounded like a trumpet speaking to him, saying, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and uh, there before me was a throne of heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and carrion. A rainbow re resembled an emerald uh, circled around the throne. This powerful reminder that God is on the throne and that he's in control of the courts of heaven. And as we take our place as intercessors, that we can be confident that our prayers are being heard and that God is, uh, is working in the courts of heaven to bring about his will here on earth. In addition to prayer and intercession, Jesus is also calling us to spend more time with him. In Matthew 6, 33, Jesus says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added to you as well. As we spend time with Jesus and seek him, well, we will find him. 
and he will be found by us. We will, uh, we will be filled with the presence of his power. And Jesus said that we need to spend time with him daily in order to be victorious and to know his will. So seek the Lord today and tomorrow and this entire year daily. Spend some time with him, at least an hour. Now, one way to spend time with Jesus is by reading his word. That's right, the Bible. In Psalms 119.105, it states, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. The Bible is powerful. And it is a great tool that can guide us into our journey of seeking Jesus. It will give us wisdom, understanding, and direction, and will help us grow with our relationship with the Lord. Another way to spend time with Jesus is through worship. In Psalms 22.3, it says, But you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. As we worship and praise Jesus, we are enthroning him in our hearts and in our minds, and we're putting him to a, the rightful place of authority in our lives. As we continue to move forward in this new year, it is clear that Jesus is calling on all generations to represent him. I hear this generation and that generation. However, in Isaiah 6, 8, God says, Who shall I send and who will go for us? This verse reminds us that God is calling all of his people, regardless of their age, to be part of his plan and purpose. He's calling on each of us uh, to ask him how we can be used in his kingdom. One way God is using all generations is through revival of evangelism. The Bible tells us in Mark 16, 15 through 18, he said to him, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to a whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, and whoever does not will be condemned. And these signs will accompany these those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up certain serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Jesus brings this message of salvation to the world through signs, wonders, and miracles. And so that's going to be part of the evangelism, uh, of revival of evangelism. I'm seeing like groups of women. I'm seeing men going out. I'm seeing two by twos. I'm seeing them ministering to uh, just inside malls, streets, uh, neighborhoods, downtown, you know, just out wherever they are. And Jesus is sending them everywhere. And he's calling on you to start right where you are at. As part of this revival, God is raising up an army of prophetic seers and feelers who are going to be used in this kingdom. Now, these seers are led by the Holy Spirit, and they can see like spiritual realities, what's going on in God's world, such as godly things, angels, and the workings of God, as stated in Isaiah 30, 10. Who say to the seers, do not see, and to the prophets, do not prophesy to what is right. Speak to us what is pleasant words. Prophesy illusions. Also, Jesus shared that he's using prophetic feelers. These, are, again, are going to be used by the Lord who could sense the presence of the Holy Spirit or an angel or shift an, uh, an atmosphere around them. As stated in 1 Corinthians 14.1, Follow the way of love and eagerly seek uh, gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. These gifts are given to us so that Jesus can use it for his glory, as well as uh, to, a witness, uh, to be a witness to him, as well as to establish his kingdom. Now, this revival is going to start inside each of us. And I'm just seeing it starting to spread to those around us. And in the church, it means that the people will be filled with the power and the presence of God. And outside of the church, throughout, uh, through the body of Christ, who is the church. I'm just seeing the Lord just using the, uh, the, the church to start off with. And I'm seeing it like in small house churches. I'm just seeing it in groups of people. And the Lord's just saying, hey, this revival is just growing. And it starts as we start seeking the Lord. So let's seek the Lord today and ask him how we can be used in this revival of evangelism. Let us also be open to the gifts of the Spirit and let God tug on our hearts to be used by him in powerful ways. 
And as we step out in faith and trust in God, we will see the manifestation of his plans and purpose in our lives uh, as, 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 as being shared to the world around us. You know, one key area that God is working in this year is the rise of small house churches. This is part of this revival of evangelism. Similar to those described in the book of Acts, these house churches will be places of miracles, signs, and wonders where Christians can come to receive discipleship and grow in their faith. Um, and just as well, I'm just seeing again, uh, like uh, the people sitting down, uh, uh, breaking bread after church. They have a potluck and the miracles start happening there. Now, in the book of Acts, we see that uh, the early church meetings in small groups, homes, and they shared the good news of Jesus Christ with those around them. These house churches were places of fellowship, worship, and teaching where believers were able to grow in their faith and share their testimony with others. Similarly, in 2023, I'm seeing a rise of these small house churches, and it's going to be a powerful force for evangelism and discipleship. It's just not in small house churches that I'm seeing that God moving in. I'm also seeing a big movement this year for women. God is putting women into places of power. I'm seeing he's putting them on pedestals of power, like, like they're standing on a pedestal and it's just growing and getting taller. He's using them in every way to bring the gospel of, uh, of Jesus Christ. Now, we see this in the book of Acts where women played a vital role in the early church, such as Priscilla, along with her husband, Aquila, uh, taught the Apollos more accurately about Jesus. And the book of uh, Philemon, where uh, Philippine is identified as a deacon of the church in Syria. Now, in 2023, I believe that God is calling women to take their leadership roles in the church. We're going to see a rise of women pastors, youth pastors, um, uh, deacons, elders, and the Lord's wanting to use them, to use their gifts and talents to bring the gospel to the world. Uh, this is a powerful moment that we're seeing, and we are excited to see how God will use women to bring about change in the church. I felt like God said, there's more about women. Like I'm seeing CEOs, I'm seeing executives, I'm seeing big positions, small positions, uh, large and small, and they're all important to the Lord to establish his kingdom. So if you're a woman and you heard this, you need to ask the Lord, how do you want to use me in this new year? Now, as we consider what God is doing in 2023, I hear Jesus speaking to us and emphasizing the importance of seeing him as depicted in the Gospels. He's wanting us to understand the significance of the three prayer models he modeled for us in the Bible. And Jesus says that in these last days, it will be like in the days of early in the early church where the apostles were persecuted for the Lord. And he wants us to be prepared for persecution that may, be, that may come as we spare, spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, in the gospels, we see Jesus teaching us how to pray through the Lord's Prayer, the model of prayer of faith, and teaching on the persistence in prayer. Now, these three prayer models are powerful tools that can help us overcome persecution and get our prayers answered quickly. By studying and applying these prayer strategies, we can be uh, we can have the experience uh, and, and experience the power uh, of a prayer in our lives, and we can see the hand of God moving in our lives and in other people's lives in a very powerful way. Furthermore, Jesus is uh, also said in Matthew twenty one twenty two, "If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask in prayer." This verse shows us that the importance of faith in prayers. It also, uh, through faith, that we can receive the answers to our prayers. And when we pray with faith, we can be assured that God is listening and that he is working in our lives to bring about his will. As we continue to listen to what Jesus is doing in 2023, he emphasizes the importance of giving. This uh, includes giving our time, our finances, our prayers, our love, and heart. Jesus is calling us to extend ourselves and trust in him, just as the parable of the mustard seed teaches. 
in the parable, Jesus teaches us that even the smallest amount of actions and faith, when we combine them together and trust in Christ, we can move mountains and dry, giant things that are in our lives and get freedom. The same way, Jesus reminds us the importance of giving to the marginalized and the oppressed in our society, such as orphans, homeless, and widows, not, uh, and as well, including battered women. Jesus said that the church has suffered uh, tremendously these last few years due to his people not going to church and paying their tithes and their offerings. Jesus says that uh, most of the time it's just 20% of the church that's been giving. And he shared with me, it's a lower amount. It's like it's maybe a, a, a two, three percent that are only giving. And Jesus shared that this year is going to be one of the best years financially for the body of Christ, for churches. And the attendance of these churches are going to go crazy. It's going to be packed. The churches are going to be bringing people in left and right, and people are getting their tithes and their offerings. And it's going to be the best year financially for the church as God's people begin to give. Jesus also shared that when we give above and beyond our normal tithes and offerings, he says that he's giving a hundredfold blessing in return. He encourages us to search for local uh, ministry organizations that serve these groups in our communities. In Matthew 6, 33, Jesus says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and these things will be given to you as well. Uh, this reminder is that uh, when we prioritize God's kingdom uh, and righteousness and giving, we shall receive blessings and financial breakthrough in our own lives. Similarly, in Luke 6.38, Jesus teaches us to give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your laps. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. This is a promise that when we give generously, God will bless us in return. Jesus emphasizes the importance of waiting on the Lord and renewing our strength during this difficult time. He says that through worship, meditation, reading scripture, listening to religious leaders, watching uh, spiritual content, and spending time with him is critical to achieve victory in 2023. He reminds us that our strength comes from staying close to God and letting him work through us rather than relying on our own efforts. In the Bible, we see the importance of waiting on the Lord in Isaiah 40, 31. It says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar like wings, like eagles. They will run and, and, and not grow weary. They will walk and, and not be, will not faint. This verse teaches us that when we put our hope and trust and our faith in Jesus Christ, he will renew our strength. He will enable us to soar like eagles. In Philippians 4, 8, Paul reminds us to focus our thoughts on what is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy. And this is what the Lord wants us to do to focus on the things of God and to renew our minds through God's given word. As we continue to listen to what Jesus is telling us in 2023, he reminds us not to worry about the things that are really troubling us. You know, some of the sins that are keeping us down and trying to fix ourselves with New Year's revolutions. He reminds us, just as we take a shower to wash away the dirt and the impurities from our physical bodies, He's also working to cleanse us from the impurities of sin in our own spiritual lives. Jesus is wanting to bring a season of inner healing to us the entire year, revealing to us what we need to be cleansed of and to be set free from. And he will heal it right at the root. He encourages us to take note of the things that he's bringing to our mind and our heart, to bring them before him daily in prayer. And he assures us that we can, as we continue our relationship with him and spend time with him, he will take away our sins and bring about the true cleansing and freedom that we get from Christ. 
finally. Jesus revealed to me the truth about uh, God is actively working to surround uh, and safeguard his people. As stated in Job 1.10, he's providing a hedge of protection that encompasses and defends us. That's right. A hedge of protection around you and your family. And he defends us from danger that threatens us from harm. Uh, for those of you that have put your trust in faith, he's bringing a sense of calm and serenity. Even in the midst of turmoil, things that are going around us, turn on the news, watch out, you know, it's crazy out there. And he's going to take away that confusion that may be present in the world around us. God reminds us through, through his word that he's always in control, that he has the plan. And he's actively working to shape and prepare us for the next strategies and stages of the journey that he's bringing through our life. He's removing the obstacles that hold us back and freeing us from the grip of the enemy so that we can move forward with confidence and peace that in our hearts that the Lord is, 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 is reigning in our lives. Jesus is bringing healing to the brokenhearted, binding up their wounds and restoring them to wholeness. This is a year of the Lord's favor, and we can be confident that God's favor is with us this year. It is also a year of abundance financially, and the Lord is encouraging us to sow our seed in faith and that he will bless us in return. As we come to an end to this special word from the Lord, Jesus reminds us uh, that, that he's calling us to get ready. He compares this readiness to one of the virgins uh, of the, uh, the parable of the ten virgins in Matthew 25, 1 through 13. In this parable, Jesus tells ten virgins who were uh, tells of ten virgins who are waiting uh, for the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and brought extra oil for their lamps, while the other five are foolish and did not. When the bridegroom finally came, the five wise virgins were ready and able to enter into the wedding banquet, while the other five foolish ones were not. This parable serves as a reminder that we must be prepared for the return of Jesus as we make sure that our lamps are filled with oil. And this context represents the Holy Spirit. We must be filled with the Spirit in actively seeking to grow in our relationship with God so that when Jesus does return, we will be ready to enter into his presence and partake in the wedding feast of the Lamb. In Matthew 24, 44, Jesus also says, Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. This verse reminds us that we must be ready at all times, as we do not know when Jesus will return. In Luke 12, 35, Jesus says, Be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning. This verse reminds us that we must be prepared for Jesus' return by being dressed for service and keeping our lamps burning, meaning to be filled with the Holy Spirit. As we conclude uh, and, and take uh, Jesus' word to heart and actively seek to be ready for his return, let us make sure that our lamps are filled with oil and that we are filled with the Holy Spirit and actively growing in our relationship with God in this way. We will be ready to enter into his presence. Jesus is with you. He strengthens you. He's making a way for you in the wilderness and the streams in the wasteland. Now, start asking Jesus what he's calling you to do. Now, throughout the year, I'm going to be sharing with you prophetically in detail more about God's plan and purpose. There's a lot here we're going to be diving into. And so uh, just get ready uh, and may the peace of God be with you in this season. Thank you so much for joining us for this encouraging word for what God is doing in 2023.